Okay, guys, here is our last video for the weekend. Thank God, because I have so much other stuff to do. Um, okay, so we have a differential equation. Um, I've got dy dx as a function of x, but I want to find out what my original function is. So you have done this quite a few times before, but um, I, I guess, you know, it wasn't in terms of harder sort of functions, it was just in terms of uh, acceleration, displacement, velocity, integrating to find our original function. Um, okay, so here I've got um, dy dx equals f of x. Uh, y is an integral of f of x becomes big F of x. So that's our assumption. When you integrate little f of x, you get big F of x, um, which is part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, big F of X is an antiderivative of F of X. The general solution includes a constant, um, which we already know about. An initial condition allows us to get a particular solution. So sometimes you get a particular solution, sometimes you get a general solution. This first question says find the general solution of this equation. Um, so before you even start, if we integrated this side, dy dx, with respect to x, and integrated this side, 2x plus 1 on 1 minus x squared dx. We know if we integrate this, we're just going to get y. Um, we don't need to put a plus c because we're going to put a plus c on the other side. Um, and uh, if we put a plus c on the other side and a plus c, plus c on the left and plus c on the right, then they're basically going to, when you bring that plus c over to here, they're basically going to become a single constant anyway, so it doesn't really matter. If we integrate 2x, we know we're going to get x squared. Um, if we integrate this, we're going to get either sine or cos. Um, you can see how many messages I get when I'm trying to do work. Um, oh, it just doesn't stop. Okay. Um, when I integrate this function, if it was negative on top, it would be cosine, inverse cosine. But this is going to be inverse of sine um, that value there is just one and then I've got my plus C so that is my general solution to that equation okay y equals x squared plus sine inverse of x plus C now here we're not going to get a general solution we're going to get a particular solution because they've give us, given us a an a um what do we call it? I've gone blank. An initial condition. God, I must be tired. Okay, if we look at this equation here, uh, it looks a bit like a tan, but it's not because it's got a square root. It looks a bit like a sine or a cos, but it's not because it doesn't have a 1 on top or a constant on top. Uh, let's think, is it a substitution? If I let u equal t squared plus 9, du dt is 2t. The top looks a bit like 2t. Okay, so we can say h of t, when I integrate this, is the integral of 2t on square root t squared plus 9 dt. Because I've added in that 2 on top, I've got to put a half out the front. Now we know we haven't changed anything because the half and the 2 will cancel each other out. Okay, now let's make our substitution. So I get a half of um, the integral 1 on u, that's u, to the half, or the square root of u. I said 1 because I'm going to bring that dt down here, at uh, 2t down here. We know that du dt is 2t, so I'm going to get du dt because I've replaced that 2t with du dt. And then I've got dt. Of course, they cancel each other out. So we have 1 half the integral of u to the negative half du. We add 1 to that power. So we're going to get a half and divide by the new power. So we get a half. 1 half. Because uh, this becomes a half, when I divide by a half, it's the same as times it by 2. And then u to the power of a half plus c. So we just get 
u to the half plus c, which is h of t equals the square root of t squared plus 9 plus c. However, if, uh, don't know what happened then. However, <laughs> however, we know h of 4 equals 1. So when I put 4 into that equation, 1 equals 16 plus 9 plus c. So 25 square root is 5. Bring 5 to the other side, we get c equals negative 4. So our part particular solution, h of t is square root t squared plus 9 minus 4. That's it. Okay. That's not too bad. Stuff that we've already done before as well. Um, it's just that we're getting more complex functions than what we would have in the past. Okay, the rate of change of a shaded area covered by a shrub is modelled by that equation, dA dt equals this function, where a metre squared is covered is the area covered by the scrub, t, shrub, scrub, uh, t months after it's planted. If the shrub covered an area of 0.3 metres when planted, so we know a of 0 equals 0 0.3, they've told us that. What area does the shrub cover after nine months? Oof, got to answer a few questions here. Okay, so we know dADT equals that. So A equals the integral. That's the same as 1 on 50, I think. 1 on 50. That's 2 on 100, yep. T plus 1 half um, sine pi T on 6 dT. Okay, when we integrate that t on 50, we get a of t is equal to t squared on 100 plus. When we integrate sine, because we're going to get negative, uh, where are we? We're going to get negative a half times that but flipped, 6 on pi, cos uh, pi t on 6. And then plus c, t squared on 100 minus 3 on pi cos pi t on 6 plus c. So that's what a of t is. But we can find our particular solution because we know when t equals 0, a equals 0 0.3 or 3 on 10. I like to work with fractions. So... Let's put zero into this thing. A. Oh, I stuffed it up already. Okay, so three on ten is equal to zero squared on a hundred, zero, minus three on pi times cos of zero, which is one, and then plus c. So therefore c is equal to 3 plus 3 on 10 plus 3 on pi, which I'm going to make 3 pi plus 30 on 10 pi. So that's my constant. So we get a of t is equal to t squared on 100 minus 3 on pi cos of pi t on 6 plus c, 3 pi plus 30 on 10 pi. Okay, so that's our general equation, but I think it asks us to do something else. It said, what area does the shrub cover after 9 months? The rate of change covered by that is uh, covered by shrub t months. So we want to know what is a when t equals 9. So a of 9 is equal to 9 squared on 100 minus 3 on pi cos of 9 t on 9 pi t, 9 pi on 6, which is 3 pi on 2, 
and then plus 33 pi plus 30 on 10 pi. Okay, so we get 81 on 100. Cos of 3 pi on 2 is 0. So that's scrapped. Plus 3 pi plus 30 on 10 pi. Let's put it all over 100 pi. So we get 81 pi plus, I've got to times that by 10, 30 pi times that by 10, 300, all on 100 pi. So my exact area would be 111 pi plus 300 on 100 pi after nine months and meter squared. <clears throat> okay, um, one of the things I haven't shown yet is you can do this on the CAS. So, um, let's have a look. So what do we have? We had X divided by 50 plus a half sine pi X one half sine pi x on 6. Uh, so that's my function. Interactive calculation, complex advanced. Is it D solve? Okay, so D solve. So that's my, oh, you've got to put in that that's your derivative. So at the start, you've got to put uh, y and then dash. Where's the dash? Dash. Y dash equals that. My independent, my dependent variable, is, my independent variable is X. My dependent variable is Y. And our initial condition is um, Y of zero uh, equals 0 0.3. Wrong argument type. Fantastic. Why didn't it that work? Okay, so it gave us uh, simplify. So okay, so that that looks like what we got before. X squared on a hundred minus three cos pi x on 6t plus 3 on pi plus 3 on 10. So there's our equation. And then if we did that, and we said given x equals 9. Uh, what have we got there? Okay. So they've said 111 on 100 plus 3 on pi is what we got. Yep. So that's exactly the same as this. So I didn't stuff anything up. Woohoo. Okay, so if you want to, you can put um, your differential equation using D solve on your calculator. You have to put Y dash. Your initial condition is Y and then obviously naught in this case equals 0.3. You can do it with second order differential equations as well. Um, but well, I think I've got one coming up, so we can have a look at it then. Uh, there you go. Okay, so um, equations of the form d squared y dx squared equals f of x. Um, okay, so here, find the general solution to this equation. Um, we're going to have to integrate it twice, so we're going to end up with, well, not two constants. The first one will be a constant, but then, let's do it. I'll shut up and I'll do it. Do it. F dash of X is equal to, okay. It's the integral of E to the X on two minus two DX, which we know when we integrate E to the X on two is two E to the X on two minus two X plus C. So that's our first general solution for our derivative. But then we know F of X is equal to the integral of two E to the x on 2 
minus 2x plus c dx. Now, when we integrate this, we're going to get 4e to the x on 2 minus, and because that, e to the x on 2, uh, the integral, not the derivative, is, that's a half. When I say 1 and a half, I get 2, which is why I times that by 2. Minus x squared plus cx, because I created a constant here. When I integrate that, I would get cx, and then I've got a new constant, which is plus d. So that is my general solution for um, e to the x on 2 minus 2 is the second derivative. So my first derivative is this function here. Uh, and the cat should be able to do that as well. So e to the x on 2 minus 2. Where did it go? Okay, interactive. Oh. It is y double dash. So we've got to find dash dash equals e to the x on 2. <coughs> Excuse me, minus 2. Highlight interactive advanced d solve. Our independent variables x, our dependent variables y. We have no condition. So it says 4e to the x on 2 minus x squared x times a constant number 2 plus constant number 1. So in this case, constant number 2 is c and then constant number 1 is d. But it still does it for us. Okay, a particular curve is described by this differential equation d squared y dx squared is given by 6x. The tangent to the curve at the point 3, 6 makes an angle of 45 degrees with a positive x-axis. Okay. So the nice thing we know, f of 3 equals 6 here. And we also know dy dx equals, because it makes an angle of 45 degrees, it equals 1 when x equals 3. So there's our two initial conditions, so we can find the original equation. Okay, uh, so we know that dy dx is equal to the integral of 6x dx. So dy dx equals um, x 3x squared. 3x squared plus c when x equals 3, dy dx equals 1. Um, if you can't remember how I got 1, you know that m is equal to tan theta, which is also equal to dy dx. And dy dx is equal to tan of 45, which is 1. So my gradient equals 1. So I get 1 equals 3 times 3 squared plus c, 1 equals 27 plus c, so therefore c equals negative 26. Okay, from there we have got our y, y is equal to the integral of 3x squared minus 26 dx, y is equal to, look at how nice that is, x cubed minus 26x plus, now I've already used c, so don't use c again, because you're, you're basically using the same constant twice and saying they're different things, so you shouldn't, so make it d, and we know when x equals 3, y equals 6, so therefore 6 equals 27 minus 26 times 3, uh, plus d. What is 26 times 3? 78. Okay, so 27 minus 78 minus 51. I'm going to get d is 57. So therefore, y is equal to x cubed minus 26x plus 57. That's the original curve. Now let's go and see if we can find the same thing on our CAS. So clear all. Okay. Uh, what was it? Y. Where's the dashes? Y double dash 
equals 6x. Highlight interactive advanced desolve include condition. So a independent variable is x, our dependent variable is y. We know that uh, y dash, where's dash, dash of 3 equals 1. And we know that y of 3 equals 6. I don't know why it doesn't work with the brackets. Then when I change it, it seems to. Okay, so y equals x cubed minus 26x plus 57, which is what we got. Hooray! Not made any mistakes in this video. Well, it doesn't seem like I have. Maybe I did at the start. <laughs> okay. And we've got one last example. Um, there's instructions here on how to use a CAS, but we know how to do it because we've done it on every question. Uh, someone keeps texting me. And uh, my wife, so I have to respond, otherwise I get into trouble. Okay, consider the differential equation dy, d squared y dx squared equals cos squared x. Oof, this is going to make me work. Okay, so d squared y dx squared is equal to cos squared x. So we know dy dx is equal to the integral of cos squared x dx. Well, we can't integrate cos squared x, but we know that cos squared x is equal to, is it 1 plus, I can't remember. I wonder if our calculator will work it out for us. Cos of x squared equals, simplify. Doesn't do anything. Uh, okay. If I was stuck in an exam, what would I do? I'll change this back to Y's. Clear this. Clear this. Okay. What have we got? Cos squared X. Cos. I forgot to put the squared at the front. X squared. Sketch it. And then go, okay, so if you think about it, it's got a center at one. Um, it's got an amplitude of a half. Oh no, it's got a center of a half. So it's got a half plus one half and then a period of three of pi, so a half cos 2x, are they the same? They are the same. So it's a half, one plus cos 2x. A half, one plus cos 2x. Okay, so dy dx equals one half integral of one plus cos 2x dx, which is one half x. When I integrate cos, I get sine. So plus a half sine 2x um, plus c, which is x on 2 plus 1 quarter sine 2x plus c. Okay. Find the general solution. Mm, okay. We can go on. So we can say y is equal to the integral of x on 2 plus 1 quarter sine 2x plus c dx. So 
y is equal to x squared on 4 plus when I integrate sine I get negative cos so negative 1 8 cos 2x plus cx plus d um, okay when uh, dy dx equals 0 when x equals 0 and then y equals 0 so let's go back to here so that's our general solution but I think it might be a bit painful to go back we sort of need to if we know dy dx equals 0 and x equals 0 we get 0 equals 0 on 2 plus 1 quarter sine 0 plus c uh, so that's going to be 0 sine of 0 0 so c just equals 0 okay and we know that y of 0 equals negative 1 8 so we go negative 1 8 equals 0 minus 1 on 8 cos of 0 and then plus d so from here cos of 0 is 1 when I bring negative 1 8 to the other side it'll become positive 1 8 so we get d equals 0 so our general solution is y equal uh, our particular solution is x squared on 4 minus 1 on 8 cos 2x assuming I've stuffed nothing up okay um, once we've got that we've got our cos so this is what you guys should be doing every time you do a question don't jump straight to the answers in the back of the book practice using your cos so we know d squared y dx squared equals cos x I'm going to grab that I'm going to go back to here I'm going to clear everything paste it now d squared y dx squared so y double dash equals cos of x squared interactive advanced d solve we know that x is our independent variable y depends on x we know y dash there's dash y dash oh let's go back and see what they do on the cas why is it different to what i'm doing it's exactly the same okay so y dash of zero equals zero and y of zero equals negative one divided by eight that all looks good wrong argument type why does it keep doing this if you know why it does it can you comment down below on the video don't forget to subscribe add me to your youtube or whatever the kids say my daughter watches that crap all the time okay so x squared on 4 minus cos 2x on 8 x squared on 4 minus cos 2x on 8 yay i don't think we've got any mistakes in that video all right okay so that is exercise 9b um and that's what i'm going to assume that you guys are up to on in the next class okay enjoy the long weekend enjoy doing homework ha <laughs> ha i have to mark sacks i have to write reports i have to mark tests i have to write tests and i have to write sacks if that makes you feel any better um it probably won't because i know it doesn't make me feel any better because i i'm hanging for holidays anyway have a good weekend i will see you tuesday bye